Hey guys, Julian here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make minimal tech house in the style of Ben Sterling. This one's been requested a lot. As usual, you can get the project file and samples and MIDI and presets, all of that stuff from this video in the description. And if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there because it's already available. And yeah, let's dive in. So this is the clip you heard in the intro. We're at 127 BPM, and the first sound we have here is the kick, which sounds like this. So you can hear really simple and just like a nice, really fat and punchy kick like this, you know, just something with a lot of body to it. That's kind of more round. Like if you look at this, you can see it has that very sharp transient and then it has like this nice round kind of body to the sound. That's what you want to look for. It's more about like the type of kick you're looking for than like, you know, all this crazy processing. As you can see, we just have a little bit of saturation on there to beef it up. And yeah, that's it for the kick. After that, we have the bass line, which sounds like this. So here are the notes. I'll pitch this up so you can hear what's happening here. It's really simple. So you can hear it's just going A sharp up to A sharp an octave up and then F the fifth. Then we have another A sharp, F the fifth again, and then Z sharp which is just two notes down from the fifth. So really simple. But you can hear it just grooves really well with the kick. And yeah, and then for the sound with this one, it's just made using operator. You can see we have three sine waves here. They're all at different octaves. And yeah, this is pretty much how you make this type of sound. It's just like, you know, based on a sine wave. And then you can hear we just add these FM oscillators on top to make it a little bit more like harmonically rich and kind of have more stuff going on. So you can still hear it as well as feel it in the mix. And then after that, we just have a little bit of saturation to beef it up a bit. And then I have an EQ8, which is cutting at 100 hertz. This makes a bit of room for the kick because the kick is typically hitting around 100 hertz and it's also boosting the low end. And then that's it for the bass. After that, I have the kick and bass grouped together. You know, I like to keep the low end together. I just have a little bit of saturation on this. Here's without it. And with this, you can hear subtle but it just gives the kick and bass a little bit more power in the mix and yeah then after that we have the 303 which sounds like this so you can hear really simple it's just playing literally three notes and they're all three just a sharp so we just have like this little thing we can hear it's kind of playing with the bass line so yeah if, when you have a sound like this, like a lot of people have asked me how to do 303s in the style and how Ben Sterling does this style of 303s. And really, the key is just kind of keeping it simple and making it fit in with the bass line. You don't, like, you wouldn't want to have, like, a whole, da -da 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 -da, like, super complex 303 pattern. But just having something like this where it's more, like, percussive and it's more of a stab. <laughs> You can hear, like, it's not taking up that much space on its own, so it can fit into this big mix. And that's really a big part of it, because I think people are trying to do these, like, crazy 303 patterns and, you know, trying to fit that in over top of a bass line that's already very busy like this. And that's not going to work, but if you can make it really short and stabby like this, there you go, that's the key. And then for the sound on this one, it's really simple. It's just operator. I've got a saw wave. Going into a bandpass, the bandpass has a bit of an envelope on it. We've got a pretty high resonance. This is how you get the 303 sound. And then I also have this LFO on here, which you can see is just moving the filter. So it's just kind of like slowly doing that. And yeah, it just makes the sound kind of come to life a bit so that it's not just like sitting in the same space. But now we have this filter frequency moving around slightly. And it makes a big difference in terms of keeping the track interesting. Then we just have this echo doing eighth notes, and then we have this amp. This is pretty essential for the 303 sound. If I turn it off, you can hear it's kind of thin. When you add this, it gives it that, like, distorted, crispy kind of 303 sound. And the final thing on there is just a high-pass filter cutting out the low end, because you can hear this has quite a bit of low end in it. It is like a bass. Then we just cut that, and there we go. And yeah, that's it for the 303. After that, we have this little plonk sound, as I've called it, which sounds like this. So this is a nice sort of like rhythmic extra like energy layer because you can hear like if we play it with the kick, 
It's just playing on those, like, every other 16 note, and then it takes a little pause at the end. But what happens when you add this in is it's adding a lot of groove to the track. If I play the track without this, and then I'll turn it on while it's playing. Just having, like, that happening in the background really adds a lot to the track, and I think it adds a lot of energy. And this is one of those things that you may not always notice either, like, when you're listening to these tracks and when you're trying to make this style of a track on your own. But adding this just adds so much to the overall track, and it's really going to make a big difference in terms of energy and making everything exciting. So you can see, really simple on the notes, it's just playing A-sharp since that's the key we're in. And then I've got this operator pad here. So you can see, it's just two sine waves, actually. I've got the envelope set up, so it's pretty percussive, pretty, like, kind of clicky like that. And you can see, yeah, we just got chorus pitch on the first one there, chorus pitch on the second one there. You have the fine up to a thousand, so I think that's really like an octave up from where it is already. And yeah, it's just like a simple FM sound. Then we just have that going into a low pass, which has an envelope. I've also got the shaper on there, which makes it a bit more percussive. And then we have this LFO here. You hear how this is kind of like changing, like we play a lot of notes. Here how it's kind of like moving and evolving and changing. That's what this LFO is doing. We've got it on the volume of oscillator B, just like slowly moving that and then after that we have a bit of chorus this you can see i've got the feedback up so here's without this and then with it so it adds this kind of metallic thing on top and it really brings the sound to life and what happens is you're hearing all this little like movement in the background from this which really adds a lot to the track again this is a very subtle kind of background element but what it's doing for the track is quite a bit with stuff like this then after that, we have an echo, just doing 16th notes, just giving it a bit more space. And we have a drum bus to fatten the sound up and make it hit a bit more and be a bit more punchy. And then finally, we just have a high pass filter cutting out the low end. And that is it for the plonk. After that, we have the hi-hats, which sound like this. So you can see we have quite a bit of movement happening with the hi-hats. So the first one and the sort of main one is just this. Open hi-hat, you can see what it is. It's this, like, punchy, very full-sounding open hi-hat sound. And then what I've done is I've taken in here and I've shortened it using the amp envelope. So, yeah, typically in these style of tracks, you know, you wouldn't just have, like, a big type of hi-hat. You'd just have, like, a like that. So that's what this is doing. And then I just have a bit of saturation to make that a bit fatter. Then we have this open hi-hat. As you can hear, this adds a lot of intensity and energy to the track. If I turn this off, it's a little bit more straight. But then you hear this, and it's adding a lot of energy. So this is really simple. It's just an open hi-hat just playing in there. You can see I've got like some different lengths on the notes so that we've got some that are longer, some that are shorter. And yeah, and then we have this little noise thing here, which is just like this. So it's just hitting at the start of every bar, you can hear it's just like... Yeah, it's just kind of like a nice little background thing. This is another one of those things that you may not always notice, but it's in there and it's adding a lot because you hear how much movement is happening. Listen to if we just have, like, just the main hi-hats. You know, it's much more boring and flat, but then when we add these... You know, it's just simple stuff like this to kind of bring the whole thing to life. So you can see, yeah, just a little bit of operator. We've got the attack up a bit, so that's making it kind of like... And then I have a band pass. And yeah, and then the last hi-hat we have here is this closed hi-hat, which sounds like this. So just like another sort of drum machine style, very, like, metallic sounding closed hi-hat, just playing straight 16th notes. And yeah, and then we have those all in a group. I just have a bit of drum bus on the group to kind of fatten them up here, so without that. And then with it, you can hear, like, it really brings these together and makes them more full and bigger sounding. And then the last thing on there is just a high pass filter cutting out the going because different samples can tend to have a bit of going in them, and it's always good to cut that out. And uh, yeah, that is it for the hi-hats. And then the last thing that we have here is the percussion. So you can see we just have, like, this clap here. Pretty simple. With this, it's more about just finding a really fat clap, like, when I was putting this up against reference tracks, if you get too thin of a clap, 
it's not going to work. It's not going to be really, like, powerful enough for the style. But if you get something very fat and full like this, it sits in there nicely. And that's what you're looking for. And yeah, then we have this little snare. Just comes with every two bars, you know. Pretty simple. And then the other percussion layer that we have here is this little zap, which sounds like this. So this is really simple. This is very popular in the style. I heard this in a few Ben Sterling tracks. A lot of people that make this style of sort of like minimal tech house like this use these little sounds. And the way that you make this, as you can see, I just have it playing the root note of the key. I always put it on, like, we're in the key of A sharp, so I put it on A sharp. I always do that, even if it's pitching, which you'll see in a second. It still is always good to just keep it to the reference to the original note of the key. But yeah, so you can see, really simple sound, just a sine wave with a super plucky envelope. And then we have this pitch envelope, and that's what creates the, the zap. You can hear without it, it's just like a little... Doo -doo -doo. So then this is just making it go from up top and just go like... Like dropping down like that. You've got the initial up there, and then it goes all the way down. Oh yeah, it's a really simple sound to make, but it's a nice little percussion because it's small and it stands out in the mix. Like it's not taking up that much space, but you can hear it very clearly. A lot of times little percussion sounds, it can be hard to do that. So that's why these zaps are really good. And I think that's why these people use these a lot. And then on the percussion group here, you can see I just have a bit of drum bus. So there's without it, and with it, you can hear it just gives everything a little bit more punch, a little bit more fullness, and makes it all so that it is strong enough to fit into this mix. And yeah, so that's going to be it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get the full project file and samples and MIDI and presents. All of that stuff from this video is available in the description. And if you're a patient on my Patreon, check there because it's already available. Thank you so much, guys, and I will see you tomorrow with another video.